On this episode of The Trend Talk, we make our own who's who power list of Latinas making waves and changing the world. Also, author and playwright Josefina Lopez stops by to talk about all of her new projects and gives us the lowdown on what inspired her to write Hungry Woman in Paris. Director Ben de Jesus is in the house to talk about the documentary he and pal John Neguizamo are developing, Latin history for morons. And one of our favorite trainers, Abe Cruz, shares his journey on how he went from behind bars to becoming an inspirational trainer through his mindset of champions. All that and more on The Trend Talk. Welcome to the Trend Talk. We're going to have a very special show, chock full of Latino and Latina powerhouses. Speaking of which, hi, Belle. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> Powerhouse girl. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be back. I I'm know. glad you guys are joining us. You know, I love talking about all these trending topics with right, you right. and with our audience and with our guest. But, you know, there's also something that was troubling, troubling me that I want to talk to you about. Okay, so the other day I was sitting at home looking mm -hmm. at Time Magazine and the cover is about women and then they, they put a list together of 46 women who changed the world. And I'm like excited to look. And so I, you know, thumb through the pages right. and there's only two Latinas in a list of 47. That's only 0.9% of the women and we're like 17% of the population. So I'm thinking... Why did they leave out so many of our wonderful women? We have so many Latinas who are so accomplished and who have changed the world. That's right. And on that list, I believe it was Selena Gomez and who else? Rita Moreno. And Rita Moreno. But our community is that, but it's also much, much more. We have so many successful Latina women in science, in the STEM, yes. uh, STEM industries. Education. Education, entertainment, arts. Etc. For example, Dolores Huerta, who's an icon. She's a civil rights activist who's been a legend in this country. And how could uh, they leave Dolores Huerta? I know she you know? got a, a medal of freedom from Barack Obama. Right. right, and you know maybe the reason why is because you know she is the co-founder of the U United Farm Workers. Right. But everyone knows more about Cesar Chavez than they do about Dolores. And, you know, now there's a movie about her, a documentary. documentary produced by Carlos Santana, right? And directed by Peter Bratt and produced by Benjamin Bratt, the right. actor. See, it's kind of our community helping each other yes. and giving each other platforms in order to put a, ha a, a spotlight on all of our accomplishments because some other magazines ignore us. Yes. For example, Elena Ochoa, I mean, she was an astronaut, right? We have a couple of uh, amazing athletes that have really succeeded, have been to the Olympics. We have Selena Quintanilla, who really... Yes, she really changed the world as bil bilingualism, as uh, Mexican-Americans, putting us on the map and who we are. I mean, I love that scene in uh, Mi Familia when they did... No, not Mi Familia. Selena. Selena, when they did that scene about what a Latino is. Right. I mean, you know, a lot of stuff like that. Um, she still... Selena still outsells everything that they do. You know, Mac did a, a oh, makeup, right, right. and it just sold up first day. Right. So, you know, those are kind of of women who have, who have changed the world. Right. I mean, and Sonia Sotomayor. Oh, right. How could you live, leave Sonia Sotomayor out? She it made history when she became a Supreme Court judge. Right, so, and she's had an amazing education, an amazing career, and she's really an advocate for our community and for obviously for being fair because that's what her job is, to be fair as a right. justice and um so do you think it's like a diss to our community that we're not included more on these lists or are they well they say that what? they don't know so <laughs> in that vein that they don't know the latinas that have changed the the world we put together a list which will be on our facebook on our facebook so make sure you go to facebook follow us follow us at the trend talk and it's a list of latinas who have changed the world and we're going to put them all out there. It's a it's a long list. Right. So do we have the reach that Time Magazine has? No. Well, we do on the Internet, though. So when you see this list, please share it with everyone because they say they don't know we're out there. So let's put that out there and let them know who, who it is that right. are doing and changing the world on the Latina end. And speaking of powerhouses, today on our show, we're going to have a Latina powerhouse. She's 
playwright, an author, a restaurateur, a chef. She's so many amazing things and she really gives back to the community as well. Yes. We're going to have Josefina Lopez on. So don't go away. I can't wait to talk to her. We'll be right back. We want to welcome Josefina Lopez to the Trend Talk. Josefina is a Renaissance woman. She is someone whose work you've probably seen or read on film or TV. She is an author, a writer, and she recently added restaurateur to her list of accomplishments. Welcome, Josefina, and please tell me how to say that word. Restaurateur. <laughs> restaurateur. See, she knows it's, because... I'm married to a Frenchman, and I still can't speak <laughs> French, so don't worry about messing up the French. <laughs> and because you lived in Paris or France I for lived 18 in months. Paris so. for 18 months, wow. and that was enough. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk <laughs> about that a little later on, but first I want to go back uh -huh. in time. You wrote your first play at 16? 17. Yeah. 17, yes. Simply Maria? Yeah, Simply Maria. T how was that process? You know, I, I, I was so happen? angry, right? Because yeah. of the machismo. Because mm. when you're a talented, smart girl, instead of people telling you, oh, that's so great. Right. They tell you, oh, I, you know, you talk too much, you're bossy and everything. And so I was punished for being exceptional. Right. So I was so angry that, and of course, I couldn't get therapy because, you know, but Latino immigrant parents don't believe in therapy. Right. No, so, <laughs> so then I took up writing to save my life because wow. I was so angry. I was also, I suffered from depression, ADD, mm -hmm. dyslexia, a bunch of other stuff, right? right? So I basically took all that and channeled it into playwriting. Wow. And I wrote my first book. And what was that play about? It was about culture clash, mm -hmm. about like being told that you could be everything, like you, you can have the American dream and then your parents say, oh yeah, but that's just for Latino men. Right. You know, uh, you can't have that. That's for white girls. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like Marsha gets to date, but you can't, you know, and the Brady Bunch, right? Because I was the closest thing to the Lopez Bunch, right? Right. And so it was, it was very tough getting these two mixed messages and it, it was so much confusion and I was in so much pain and that's why I took up writing. And they performed it at the Latino Theater Center. They well, they Teatro Campesino toured it. Oh, okay. and it was done for PBS and won many awards. And it's been it's been all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And another uh, real milestone in your career was Real Women Have Curves. That's right. Which started out as a play. It started as a play based on my experience working in a song factory because mm. I was undocumented for 13 years. Oh, so you I, were one of the first dreamers. I really was. I told people, look, I was a dreamer for it was cool to be a dreamer. <laughs> when we were really scared, you know, and everybody's like, I'm a dreamer. And I go, hey, I'm yeah, so proud an of that. attitude shift. No, and that's great that they're yeah. like, I'm not afraid anymore. And I'm like, damn it. I, you know, I wish I had that kind of courage, yeah. but it was so scary to be undocumented because... Because you really could get taken away, and that was it, you know. Right, right. And and so yeah, so it's wonderful. But, but that that movie was made in 2002, uh, because then it was made into well, a movie that starred America Ferrera. That's right. And what is important about this film is that it might have been one of the first projects out there that really put a focus on not focusing on. On, on your body, on your body, uh -huh. and accepting and your loving curves. who you are, especially right? as Latinas, that we tend to have curves, right? That's just naturally yeah, yeah, yeah. how we are. But when you're an made. indigenous person, you know you don't process sugar and flour the way a white person does. They took <laughs> they had 500 years to do that, right? Right. Our, so our bodies tend to be different, right. and so we have to honor that our beauty is different, mm -hmm. but it's still it's still you know beautiful to be a Latina. Right. And that movie was really revolutionary in other ways because it put America Ferrara, which That's is right. another major Latina actress, on the map. She's now starring on Superstore. She's having her own series called Hentified. And the 15th anniversary of Real Women Have Curves That's is right. coming up. I'm curious, do you still have a relationship with America well, Ferrara? Well, I, I just or? happened to see her a couple weeks ago because they did Hentified. Yeah. And so yes. I got to speak about being... Uh, about gentrification and growing up in Boyle Heights. Right. And the creative ways that we're fighting back. Right. Um, you know, including uh, starting a museum, I'm right. starting the Boyle Heights That's Museum. That's the other thing. Yeah. Okay, because see, Josefina started, uh, the, you were raised in Boyle Heights. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she came back to Boyle Heights and she opened up a little theater, Casa O101. Zero one, zero one. Yeah, and then she, uh, Patty Corner, she opened up a bigger version of it, That's but that right. one's still mm -hmm. there. Then she opened up her studio there, and now that's the same street, which is First Street in Boyle Heights, right. where you have your restaurant, that's Casa right. Fina. That's wow. right. Yeah. And no, now I... you have a museum. Where's the museum? Well, the museum's going to start off in the gallery section of Casa 0101, the Jean ah. de Lage Gallery, which is my father-in-law's, you know, <laughs> name. And, uh, and that's where it's going to start. We're going to start with an exhibit on the repatriation and the connection between gentrification oh. and, and repatriation. Wow. And then we're going to do one on the blowouts in, yes. uh, a few months later. And then we're going to do one on the lynching of Mexicans. Oh, 
Because now as more historians are digging up uh, our history, you're finding out how many Mexicans were lynched by the Texas Ranger and also how, how prevalent it was. We mostly know about the African-American experience with lynching, yes. but not about the Mexican experience. Yes. That's and important, important history. And going back to America Ferrara, have you connected with her and what's... That's it. We, we connected. Uh, we still have yet to have lunch. You know, it goes like, <laughs> yeah, let's have lunch. And then it's like right. a month later, you're like, uh, remember me? Right. So no, we, we haven't had lunch yet. But I'm hoping we do. I'm hoping she goes to the 15th anniversary celebration at the um, the Academy. Right. They're screening it for the yeah. Pacific Standard Time. When, yeah, they're screening it later on this fall. That's right. But see, I'm glad that the Academy is doing a whole series of all of these Latino Films. That's right. It's through the and, Getty Initiative, through the yes, Pacific Standard yes. Time, that they're saying, you know what? Where are the Latinos? You know, you like, do so much. <laughs> you're, you're a mom. You're an author. Mm -hmm. She did her, her own wife. book of, of her experiences in, in, in Paris. What's the name? That's right. She Hungry did, Woman in Paris. Yes. My Hungry first Woman. novel. I love that title. It's very yeah. sexy, too. It is, I really it, love it. It's an erotic novel. It's an erotic I have to warn you. You have to read it in private. And right. then she... <laughs> Uh, we were both part of an anthology. I was so honored That's to be right. part with Eight you. Eight ways to say I love my life and wow. mean it. Exactly. And then we did a play version of it, And then it, we right? played a, a version but of the play in her theater, and it was a big hit. It was a big hit. And hand. then also, you are a and mom, and you're you're married and all that. How do you do all this, and why? Why, why do, you do I do, do this? All? You know, I have attention deficit disorder, right, which is a gift and a blessing in that I can do the, the job of six people because my mind is so fast that I'm constantly bored, that I constantly have to be learning, doing new things, challenging myself. Otherwise, I feel like I'm dying. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the disorder. My kids mm -hmm. have it too. So imagine like me with two. Yeah, and so it's really exciting. But I think it's like yeah. kind of like a blessing and a curse because I feel like a lot of creative people have that. And, right. and I think that's why they're creative yeah. and that's why they're able to we express to. And then the other thing too is, you know, uh, when I, I remember I don't suffer from depression anymore because I've done a lot of spiritual healing work. Mm -hmm. I tell people I'm an urban curandera because I, I do a lot of energy medicine. But when I was suffering from depression, the thing is, when you suffer from depression, you have to find meaning. Otherwise, right. you don't want to be here. Right. So a lot of our authors, artists, they, we don't get the happy chemicals. Right. So then we have to say, well, then we have to create a world where we get to be happy, where we get to be excited with new things. Otherwise, our mind's like, and oh, my God, let's get out of here. <laughs> what, I, what I am totally in love with is that that process of, of, of you processing the pain and, and, and birthing plays, birthing books, gives opportunities to other Latinas right. to express their their abilities, like America Ferrara, you know, yes. and, and other actresses that have portrayed your character. So it's kind of like beauty comes out of your That's pain, right. right? You know, like I've suffered a lot. Right. And so I know how to teach people not to suffer anymore. But you know, writing and creativity. Josefina is not only like, a, um, what did you say, a curandera? A curandera. She's also um, a sex expert. A sex expert. <laughs> That's right. She's on your show. Any That's sex a, question you have. We're going to have to have her back then. That's right. Yes. We are going to have to oh, because, That's a hot topic. And, and I, you know, know, you know I need help in that category. <laughs> but you know what? We had some of our viewers say, you should have somebody to talk about sex. And the first thing, person I thought of was you. That's right. Well, if you oh, read my therapy. novel, you'll be like, oh, okay. Oh, it was like Fifty Shades of Grey before Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, right. right. That's right. Fifty yeah. Shades of Paris. Yeah. Okay, Hungry well, Paris. thank you so much for joining us. Thank We're so you. excited of all the wonderful things you're doing. Yeah. And uh, I really am in awe of you. Thank yes. you. And, you know, please support theater in the barrio, right? We cannot complain that they're not writing stories about Latinos right. if we don't go to the movies on Friday nights. Right. If we don't. Buy a ticket to someone's play. And where can we, where can everybody connect with you? So you can follow me at Josefina Lopez on Twitter and Casa0101.org and CasafinaRestaurant.com if you want to have a fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Josefina. You're a true powerhouse. Thank you. And you deserve to be on every powerhouse list. You're yes. on our list, that's for sure. That's for sure. Coming up, we have a Latino powerhouse, Ben de Jesus. He's going to tell us how him and John Leguizamo are working together to bring the Latino story on Broadway and on film. That's next. Welcome back to the Trend Talk. And I told you this was an episode chock full of Latino powerhouses. And today we have writer, director, producer, and all around great guy, Ben De Jesus. You are currently working on a documentary with John Leguizamo and you have all kinds of other projects under your belt. So welcome to the Trend Talk. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yes, so exciting to see you. Um, also, you started off your career, we're, we're gonna get to John Leguizamo's mm -hmm. 
a very important project right. that you're working on. But I want to talk about you too, like the stuff that you've done because you've had a long career. And one of the things that popped up for me was that you worked at MTV Cribs. Yes. Very popular show. <laughs> yes. I actually was one of the producers in the very beginning of that show. I actually started as an intern at MTV and I worked my way to PA. Yeah. And then I worked my way to producer and I ended up uh, being a producer for three seasons of uh, MTV Cribs. Wow. See, that was going to ask you. Of course, you didn't start right away being a producer at MTV. So that was how you got started, being an intern. Yes, I worked for free for a long time. Wow. Yeah, you know, that's what you got to do. But you get, you get did you gather a lot of experience and made you producer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that uh, a lot of times in life, you just got to show up. You right. got to be ready. And then all of a sudden, opportunity will find you. It's yeah. funny how that works. The harder If you work hard. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Right. That's and right. especially in Hollywood, it's such a tough industry to penetrate, right? All around, whether you're a producer or an actor or writer, and we need more people of color in the industry. So I applaud you for, you know, making your way. You've done so many different things, including directing. Um, talk, talk to us about directing for Disney. Sure. Well, um, I actually, before I went to Disney, I had been a director for about 10 years. I'd done a lot of music videos, documentaries, MTV, mm -hmm. and uh, I got into the Disney directing program. Mm -hmm. which for people out there who are aspiring, I would definitely recommend that. There's a writer's version. There's an actor's version of it. So I, I had to apply against 1,300 people, and they picked 10 wow. of them. And luckily, I was one of them. Mm -hmm. I did that for about two years. They put you on different shows, and you shadow. And I was, uh, I was shadowing on comedy shows. Tell us what shadowing is. Shadowing is uh, it's like glorified observation. Like you're, <laughs> you're basically going into the room and seeing how it happens. But you, you, you know, you obviously are drawing on your experience from before, so you're there to learn, but you're there to take the reins one day. Mm -hmm. So in the program, they put you on all these different shows. They put me on Blackish, Fresh Off the Boat, uh, a ton of Disney shows, and then before I knew it, I got my own show. So, Congratulations! Um, the template for what you're doing now, the work that you're doing with John Leguizamo, which is doing a documentary on his uh, way to being on Broadway with Latin history for morons. But first, you did that template with uh, Ghetto Clown. Tales from a Tales Ghetto. from a Ghetto Clown, right? Exactly. Talk yes. to us about Tales. I mean, I saw it, but talk to us about what it what it's about for those that may not have had a sure. chance to see it. Well, Tales from a Ghetto Clown basically captures John's journey to mount his latest one-man show on Broadway after he had been gone for 10 years. Wow, after right. Sexaholics, people don't realize, but he had kind of a little bit of a stage uh, fright incident. So he took a break for 10 years. Oh, wow. So after we hit it off, I said, hey, John, you mind if I show up at rehearsal with a camera? And I basically never stopped showing up. We mm -hmm. turned it into a documentary and it aired nationally on wow. PBS. And that's what you're doing with Latin History for Morons. Tell us first what Latin History for Morons is about. Great. Well, uh, Latin History for Morons is John's new one-man show that's heading to Broadway in October. And it basically takes 3,000 years of much of it forgotten history of Latinos. And he crams it into 90 minutes of comedy, enlightenment, all kinds of uh, great information. Then we all need to learn a little Latin history, yeah. right? Because they never, we don't get that at school. No, our is... stories have been hidden from history books. And that's why John's on this, he calls it an intellectual jihad. Wow. So tell us, like... What stories we're going to see in Latin history for Mormons? Well, the fact that Latinos have fought in every American war since the Revolutionary War. We've been present for it all. Wow. We're the most decorated minority of all minorities for hundreds of years, and yet our stories are hidden. The, the idea of, like, barbecue, even something as simple as barbecue, comes from the Taino Indians, like oh, barbacoa. Wow. Really? Like, so there's all these tidbits, chocolate. So many things have come from us. Right. And yet when you look at the history books, somehow it's just a European-centric right. side of the story. Well, you know, we, we talk about immigrants. Uh, we are a land of immigrants, and we have contributed so much, mm -hmm. but it's not in the history books. Mm -hmm. And that's what John is tapping into, that it's not in the history books. And, and we need to let people know that we're not apologizing for being here. This is our country. We're Americans, but we also, our ancestors have been here and contributing so much to this country. Absolutely. So this is a very important project. And right. I, am, I, I applaud you, you. and John. Tell, yes. a, tell him we said, hey, wonderful yeah. stuff. And John's a great guy. I love his comedy. And I'm sure everybody in our viewership loves it. Who doesn't love John, right? <laughs> I love I love his comedy. I've interviewed him before. He's always been super nice, super professional. And I'm so excited that he's so proud of his heritage. And he's really trying to, to make a mark 
in our community to tell our stories because it's so needed. And, you know, I applaud this project. So I think we all need Thank to you. support it. Thank you. And for people who love John and you want to see how he works, that's what the whole documentary is about. It's like hanging out with John. <laughs> we literally were on the road for three years, just him and I for the majority of the time. Wow. Literally hanging out in the comedy clubs, in the dressing rooms, in the green room. In the beginning, it was just me and him. Now it's a whole big team. But if you want to see what John is like behind closed doors, this is a great way. This is a documentary yeah. to watch. And also... When is the play on Broadway going to come out? Do, do, do they have a date? Yeah, it's opening at Studio 54 on October 19th in New York City. And uh, take it to on sale now. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Anything else you want to share with us? We also have a TV show that we're working on with John. Mm -hmm. we have, uh, we're doing an American Masters uh, for PBS on Raul Julia. Oh, oh my God, that's awesome. So that's another project that we have that's a little further. Uh, it's not as far along, but it's definitely happening. Awesome. Well, congratulations. It's so thank wonderful so to much. see you. Thank you thank for you. joining us. And thank you guys for joining us. We'll be right back with a lot more of the Trend Talk. Welcome back to the Trend Talk. Many of you guys are familiar with our personal trainer, Abe Cruz, who's come to be a guest on the Trend Talk several times, but he's a lot more than washboard abs and muscles. Yes, in this upcoming interview, he got very personal because he's using his personal experiences to help transform people's lives. His book that he has just written is called Mindset of Champions, and you'll see what it did for him. Take a look. We are here at Surfcore Fitness, and we have our guy, Abe Cruz. What's up, everybody? He's been visiting us off and on through our um, show in the first I season. I coming on. I love coming on. Thank you guys for having me on all the time. I appreciate it. But you're our, you're our fitness guru. You have to come here. First, I wanted to catch up with you. Um, and for our viewers that didn't catch the first interview where we talked about your, your background, um, he got into trouble when he was a teenager. Basically, or my, 21. My 20s, my early 20s. And I ended up in prison. And how long were you there? I was there for three years. And you told me you you told me something interesting the last time I saw you. You said that all the time you were there, of course, you were depressed and you went through this whole depression. But you said something like, I was planning what I'm experiencing now. Tell us about yes. that. Yes. Um, well, that's all the journey after. I was told I'd be in and out in a year. That didn't happen. I was denied. I went into depression. Um, I got on my hands and knees. I called home, you know, crying to mom. Mom told me to get on the floor and, and, and pray. She, my mom said, um, you know, get on your hands and knees and pray to God and ask for a second chance at life. So I did exactly that. I fasted. And when I fasted, I went through this like spiritual awakening and I started dreaming every night. And when I fasted and then I started dreaming, I started writing down visions that I saw in my mind. And before you knew it, after I went through this fasting phase of 40 nights, um, I started to see the future. I, and then I got motivated. I was like, I'm gonna start a clothing line. I'm gonna be on the cover of fitness magazines. I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna be on film, on TV, a motivational speaker. I just started listing them out and I still have everything today. And that, that's all coming true. All of that you, you had your clothing line, you're, you just wrote a book, and yes, the book is going to yes, be about that yes. experience. Yes, I just wrote a book. From the last season I was on with you, um, I had a meeting with my agent, Guy Clachani, over at ATV Talent. Got to give him a, some love and a shout out to Guy. Um, he sat me down and said, uh, there's a lot to do, but you have to write a book. You have to get your story out there. That's a good stepping stone to move on to other things. Um, so I wrote the book and, and I just started meeting people that gave these dreams life. And Fred Bassett is the biggest um, support, the biggest angel that has given me the opportunity to do everything. My mother inspired me and told me, get off your nalgas and do something. <laughs> love mothers, love, love mothers. Yeah. It's no it's no like a depression party there. You got to go through it and then get going. I had, you know, tons of friends. When you have money and you're, you're, you're doing everything big, everyone wants to be your friend, everyone wants to hang out. But when I was locked up and incarcerated, Everyone stopped. No one start. No one was riding me. It was. I was lonely. Um, everyone kind of like trickled away, and I was it. The only person that was there was my mom, my brother, my sister, and really my mom. You know, my brother and my sister busy crazy lives, but 
My mom was always there faithfully, putting money on my books for commissary to eat tuna and peanut butter to keep me going. But it seems like you went in jail, you had these thoughts, but it was rough oh, no, it getting... Was, it, was, it was horrible. And on the book, we're, it, it's finished now, it's being edited. Um, we have a lot of interest, even in a potential film, um, about the story, so that's exciting. But I'm gonna put my mug shots on the cover of the book as part of the design. I'm just gonna lay it out there so people can see the journey. So it was such a humbling experience. I went, I went from, and I put this in the book, everything I'm telling you I wrote in the book, I went from partying at the Playboy Mansion, spending six, seven thousand dollars in a night, um, one Christmas to the next Christmas, eating top ramen noodle and generic Oreo cookies for the next Christmas in County Jail. That'll give you a sense of reality. Yeah, absolutely. And tell us the name of the book, the name of your clothing, the name of what, there it is. The name of the book is Mindset of Champions. And I actually have some gifts um, for you oh guys gosh. too. So, I'm gonna bring it out. And I got the mindset of a champion. Oh, so, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Yes. Speaking of exercise. Yes. You're gonna have to show me Absolutely. like how I can do, build up my body. upper body strength. Yeah, we're gonna do, well actually we're gonna do an upper body slash lower body workout all at the same time. So it's a combination of things. You guys are gonna wanna, you're not gonna wanna miss this. He is truly inspirational. You've got to get his book. And speaking of inspirational, our Trend Talk trendsetter of today is Love Suhaidi. Hey, it's Suhaidi of lovesuhaidi.com. I am the founder of lovesuhaidi.com, the only digital platform for Latinas and women of color for all things love. Yes, all things love. So look up Love Suhaidi. And thanks for being a Trend Talk trendsetter. And thanks to you for joining us. And thank you and all our guests and our sponsors. It's been a fantastic show. And remember, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Trend Talk Show. That's right. And remember, if it's trending, we're, we're talking. talking. Yeah, no sé.